starting outright in Genesis. Nigeria Conference 2017 by Ed Stevens. Narrator David Clark. As already cited, every cult group and every false doctrine that has ever arisen within the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ started with a misinterpretation or denial or distortion of the first 11 chapters of Genesis. The flood was global. Another section of Genesis 1 to 11, which is under attack by liberals, skeptics and evolutionary atheists, is the global flood. Three of the main reasons why the global flood is denied are one, it does not allow atheistic geologists to have their long ages of earth history based on the rock strata evidence. Two, it does not give the theistic evolutionists any room to compromise with atheistic evolution. And three, it does not allow collective body associates and covenant creationists to spiritualize and allegorize the flood story in order to harmonize it with their collective body and covenant allegory paradigms. They assume that their CBV and CC paradigms are true and then twist the Genesis account to make it fit. However, there are at least two good reasons why their local flood theory cannot be true. Genesis 6-8 actually teaches a global flood. Genesis 6-5 Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. 6. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. He was grieved in his heart. 7. The Lord said, I will blot out man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, from man to animal to creeping thing, and to birds of the sky. For I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. Because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the, earth, with the earth. Make for yourselves an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms, and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and finish it to a cubit from the roof and set the door of the ark in the side of it and you shall make it with lower and second and third decks. Behold, I, even I, am bringing a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter into the ark, and you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind, and of the animals after their kind, of every creeping thing of the ground after its kind, Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. Also the birds of the sky, by sevens, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and I will blot out from the face of the land every living thing that I have made. Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. It came about after the seven days that the water of the flood came upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, on the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open and the floodgates of the sky were opened. 
Then the flood came upon the earth for forty days, and the waters increased and lifted up the ark, so that it rose above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. The water prevailed more and more upon the earth, so that all the high mountains everywhere under the heavens were covered. The water prevailed 15 cubits higher and the mountains were covered. All flesh that moved on the earth perished, birds and cattle and beasts and every swarming thing that swarms upon the earth and all mankind. Of all that was on the dry land, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life died. Thus he blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the land from man to animal to creeping thing and to birds of the sky and they were blotted out from the earth and only Noah was left together with those that were with him in the ark. The waters prevailed on the earth 150 days but God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark and God caused a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. Also the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed and the rain from the sky was restrained and the waters receded steadily from the earth and at the end of 150 days the water decreased. In the seventh month on the 17th day of the month the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. The water decreased steadily until the 10th month. In the 10th month on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains became visible. Then it came about at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent out a raven and it flew here and there until the water was dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove from him to see if the water was abated from the face of the land. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot. So she returned to him unto the ark, and the water was on the surface of all the earth. Then he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark to himself. Now it came about in the 601st year, in the first month, on the first of the month, the water was dried up from the earth. Then Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold the surface of the ground was dried up. In the second month on the 27th day of the month the earth was dry. Then God spoke to Noah saying go out of the ark and your wives and your sons and your sons wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. They may breed abundantly on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Lord smelled the soothing aroma and the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man. For well, the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth and I will never again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. As for you, be fruitful and multiply, populate the earth abundantly and multiply it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him saying, now behold, I myself do establish my covenant with you, with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that comes out of the ark, even every beast of the earth, I establish my covenant with you. And all flesh shall never again be cut off by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all successive generations. I set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a sign 
of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come about when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow will be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of the earth. And never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the cloud, then I will look upon it. Remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. And these were the sons of Noah. And from these the whole earth were populated. Jesus and the Apostles taught a global flood. Reference Flood, Noah and Ark, read Genesis 6-8, 6-4. New Testament references, Matthew 24, 37-39, Luke 17, 26-27, Hebrews 11, 3-7, 1 Peter 3, 20, 2 Peter 2, 5, and 2 Peter 3, 5-6. People of Noah's day were very wicked, Genesis 6-5, 11-12. Whole world perished in the flood, Genesis 6 to 7, 12 to 13, 17, chapters 7 to 8, especially 7 to 21 to 23. New Testament references, 2 Peter 2, 5, 3, 4 to 6. Only eight people survived the flood, Genesis 6, 18, 7, 1, 13 and 23. New Testament reference, Hebrew 11.7, 1 Peter 3.20, 2 Peter 2.5. Noah and three sons repopulated the whole earth after the flood. Genesis 7.13, 9, 18-19. New Testament references, Acts 17-26. Edward Wharton's book, Genesis Historical, Jesus references to the book of Genesis include the account of Noah and the worldwide flood. And as were the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Matthew 24, 37 to 39. In this quotation, Jesus refers unmistakably to Noah as a historic person, to the ark as a real, and to the flood which reached such proportions in the earth that it took them all away. A subtle attempt of liberalism is to suggest that Jesus may well have appealed to mythology in order to illustrate his doctrine. But this assumes, without any evidence, that the accounts of Noah and of Jonah, etc., are myths, and does so in contradistinction to the clear statements of the Bible. The Bible. That these men were real, and that the events for which they are known actually happened. It is impossible to get the idea from the Bible, either from Old Testament accounts, or New Testament and quotations that either the persons or the events were at all mythological. In chapter 3 of his second epistle, Peter strongly exhorts Christians to remember the Word of God in both the Old and New Testaments as a defence against those who mockingly deny the historical reliability of the Word of God. He specifies the Genesis flood in the days of Noah as an example of the trustworthiness of the Lord's promise to come in judgment against ungodly men. 2 Peter 3, 3-6 Peter points out that it was the word of God which was the means of originating the earth and also that the word of God was the means by which the world that then was being overflowed with water perished 
verse 5 to 7. In essence, Peter is saying that the flood is an historical confirmation of the reliability of God's prophetic word. If the Genesis account of the flood is not an historical fact, then Peter's entire urgent argument to godly living is baseless. Conclusion. Thus, we have seen that Genesis 1 to 11 stands solid against the attack by liberals, skeptics, evolutionary science, and even fellow preterists who deny a global flood and deny that physical death was included in the threat against Adam in the garden. There is no reason for Christians to compromise with evolution or apologize for believing that Genesis 1 to 11 is historically accurate, inspired and absolutely authoritative for us to believe and follow. The Bible literally teaches that the supernatural and miraculous creation of the visible universe took place in six literal days and that Adam and Eve were the first two humans that God created to live on planet Earth. There were no other humans on Earth before Adam and Eve were created. The rib story about creation of Eve is true and the sin of Adam and Eve resulted in both spiritual death and physical death. Moreover, the Genesis account of the flood in Noah's day is filled with dozens of examples which confirm that the flood was global in extent. I will close these words with Edward Wharton. We have observed that Jesus and Paul and Peter made doctrinal and morally implicative arguments based on their historical and literal view of the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis. Denial of the historical reality of these Genesis references will strip away from Christ and his apostles both the ground and the force of their doctrines. The mythological view of Genesis undermines that each of them maintains is the historical basis from which their doctrines are derived. Thus, the denial of a historical reliability of Genesis has serious implications relative to the infallibility of Jesus Christ, the divine inspiration of the apostles and the absolute reliability of the word of God. Wharton, Genesis Historical.